it's lockdown and you have more free time than ever. You've always wanted to learn a language, but don't know where to start. You've used classes and textbooks, but they just don't work and are way too boring. Then look no further because this video will teach you how to make the most out of your lockdown and learn your target language to fluency. Or at least close enough. Your answer is refold. Yes, refold. So what is refold? Refold is a language learning method that focuses and emphasizes on media immersion. Well, to answer your question, yes and no. Refold is similar to Aja in the sense that it also focuses on immersion learning. However, Refold is a guide on how to learn languages in general, whereas Aja focuses just on Japanese. Refold also has a couple of extra steps and ideas, which I find really good and I'll explain more about in this video. Think of Refold as more of an updated or an upgraded Aja. However, Aja is still valuable till this day. So who made Refold? Refold was made by a guy called Matt. Matt is someone who used the AJAP method. If you don't know what the AJAP method is, just click here. There should be a link around here to take you to my previous video about AJAP. But Matt is someone who used AJAP to learn the Japanese language to near native like fluency within five years. During his language learning journey, he made a lot of mistakes, which also allowed him to learn a lot of new things. This then led him to create Refold to help other language learners avoid making the same mistakes that he made and help them gain success in learning their target language. This is also something I'm trying to do with my YouTube channel. Now let's get straight into the method. If you go to the website, which will be linked in the description below, you should find a section called the roadmap. Clicking on the roadmap should then take you to the detailed roadmap. You should also be able to see a button that says simple. Clicking on simple will take you to the simplified roadmap. The difference between the detailed roadmap and the simplified roadmap is very simple. The detailed roadmap tells you the method while at the same time explaining the logic and the theory and the backed evidence as to why you should follow each one of the steps that are being taught in the method. Whereas the simplified roadmap just teaches you the method and nothing else. Just a simple, plain method of what you have to do. Obviously, the detailed roadmap is longer and will take around four hours for you to read compared to the simplified one, which will take less time, around one hour to read. For those who are fresh and are doubting the refold method, I'd recommend you go to the detailed one because alongside the method, you will also get the evidence and the reasoning and the theory as to why this is the correct way to learn it. Whereas the simplified one is for those who are going to take my word for it, take Matt's word for it after watching this video and are going to follow the method with faith and you know trust. The refold method breaks the language learning process into four stages or five if you include stage zero, which is an overview of the method. Let's start with stage one. Stage one, build a foundation. Stage one can be split up into three parts. Part A, part B, part C. Part A, setting up tools and habits. According to refold, you'll be doing three main daily activities. These activities will be active immersion, passive immersion and active study. Active immersion is when you're giving your full undivided attention to your target language media. This may be through watching a movie in your target language, watching cartoons or reading manga. Passive immersion. Passive immersion is what you'll be doing when you're not doing active immersion. Passive immersion is when you're giving your divided attention to your target language. This could be you walking down the street with your headphones in, walking your dog and listening to a podcast in your target language or washing the dishes while listening to some music in your target language. I'm glad you asked. The reason why it's important is because it's the only way you're going to be able to speak your target language correctly. In order for you to be able to use words and phrases in your target language correctly is if you've heard 
or seen that word or phrase in action countless times in order for you to then imitate its usage. Take, for example, the slang word cap. Yeah. <laughs> cap is basically another way of saying you're lying or to mean liar. To a foreigner learning English, they may know the word cap as in a hat. However, the only way they'll be able to understand and also use the word cap in terms of lying is if they've heard the word cap in terms of lying used several times around them and in context. Stop the cap! <laughs> Stop the cap right now! Stop the cap! No bullshit, bro! And that's exactly how me and you learn how to use the word cap in terms of lying. We didn't go take online classes or buy textbooks in order to learn the usage of cap. We simply just heard it being said around us in popular culture multiple times and then we just imitated its usage. And that's how we learned how to use cap. And that can be applied to languages as a whole. Going back to the activities, the final activity that is suggested that we do daily is active study. Active study is basically using a spatial repetition software such as Anki to study and memorize vocabulary in your target language. To put it simply, stage one, part A, is about building the habit of doing your passive and your active immersion daily, while also at the same time setting up and downloading Anki and then doing your target language vocabulary reviews daily. Now let's move on to stage one, part B learning the building blocks. This basically involves you learning the phonetics and the writing system of your target language. Phonetics meaning the sounds and pronunciation of your target language and writing system being the alphabet and the characters used in your target language. Depending on the language you're trying to learn, this part of the process can take a couple of minutes or it can take a couple of months. For example, if you're learning something like Spanish, which is pretty similar to English, the, right, the, the alphabet and the characters are basically the same. All you really need to learn is the pronunciation of Spanish, you know? Hola, mi amigo, como estas? <laughs> However, if you're learning something like Chinese or Mandarin, whereby it's completely different from English, where there's different intonations and a whole different set of characters that you have to learn, this guy should take a bit of time, I can't lie to you. And finally, we have stage one, part C, jumpstarting your comprehension. This is whereby you increase your comprehension of the target language by learning the most common grammar and vocabulary. By the time you learn around 1,500 to 2,000 of the most common words in your target language, you should be able to notice around one to two words every sentence that you hear in your target language. One thing you should know is that you will be studying your vocabulary every day using Anki, and you don't necessarily have to hit that 1,500 mark of most common vocabulary in order to move on to stage two. But that does it for stage one. Let's move on to stage two. Stage two, building comprehension. I won't lie to you guys, this is the longest part of the whole process. Similar to stage one, this can also be split into three parts. Stage 2A, stage 2B, and stage 2C. Let's start with stage 2A, overcoming the curve. When you actually start out watching and listening to media in your target language, everything will just seem like, bruh, like uncomprehensible. You don't understand a single thing. What's the point of me doing this? This is why Matt suggests that you should narrow down your immersion to specific domains in your target language. A domain can be thought of as a topic area within a language. Think about what do you actually want to be able to say and understand in your target language. That can either be just simply having daily conversations with your friends in that target language, or it could be talking about financial news in your target language. Whatever it is, pick one domain and then immerse yourself in the native content in that domain because that's what's useful to you and your goals and it will also make it easier for you to then go to a different domain. Let's say our target language is Japanese and the domain I would like to focus on for me is to be able to have everyday casual conversations. That means the sort of things I will be immersing myself with is TV shows like Terrace House, The House and slice of life anime such as Toradora. Matt also recommends making your learning curve much smaller by changing the difficulty 
of the content that you immerse yourself with within that domain. On the website, you'll gain more information on how to sort out your content by difficulty. Matt also says in this section, once you finish your most common vocabulary, then you can finally start sentence mining from your immersion material. What is sentence mining? I'll explain more of that in our future videos. Now let's move on to stage two, part B, which is expanding your domain. This is simply increasing the difficulty of the content that you're immersing yourself with within that domain. Again, if you want to find out how to increase the difficulty of the content that you're consuming, there's more details on the website. Now, Matt does understand that by this time, staying in the same domain and learning the same stuff and the same words will have you very bored, basically. And he does say that it's fine for you to then jump around and follow your, your interests. Go watch anime, go watch the things, you, the scientific documentaries that you like to watch and so on in your native language. However, he does say that in jumping around from different domains, it will make you, the process of you learning your target language slower because you're having to reset your starting point and having to learn a whole different domain every single time. Matt recommends staying in the domain of slice of life at least in the very beginning, so that you can pick up the vocabulary and the words that will actually be useful to you in terms of talking to natives and so on. At this point, you should also be just about ready for the monolingual dictionary transition. What's a monolingual dictionary? This is a dictionary that defines and explains words from your target language in your target language. This will allow you to see your target language from a native's point of view and also start thinking in your target language. Then we have part C, mastering comprehension. Here, Matt is assuming that you've been jumping around and following your interests and jumping around different domains. He then says that you should go back to slice of life content in your target language and focus on mastering that. Remove the subtitles from the content you've been watching and maybe also start reading novels and books in your target language. Moving from reading subtitles to reading actual literature. The final stage available on the website as of the time of the recording of this video is stage three and this is actually speaking. However, don't worry, it's gonna be a long time until you start speaking. So I'm just gonna give you guys an overview of this stage and not go into too much detail. You should really and truly as beginners be focusing on stage one and two. So to summarize, Matt suggests after spending tens and thousands of juicy hours immersing yourself in your target language, he suggests you finally start outputting. And how do you start outputting? Well, not speaking actually. It's actually just start writing. Right away, start writing and writing. Then after doing a bit of writing, then you actually start speaking. When it comes to speaking, you don't think about the vocab and all the grammar you learned with your Anki flashcards. You just let your subconscious take over and all that immersion hours you've been getting just possess you and become a native speaker of your target language. He also says when you speak, Focus more on your pronunciation and your accent. In order to do this, he recommends that you adopt a parent. What? Now, what do we mean by that? When he says adopt a parent, he says, find a celebrity or someone who has a lot of content of themselves speaking online. If you like their personality, someone who's a similar age to you and watch their content. And as you watch it, imitate what they're saying as they say it mimic, copy them, their, their gestures, their accent, their pronunciation, the way they speak, the way they breathe, mimic them. That's what it means by adopting a parent. Become that person. Now, it's very important that that person is around the same age as you because you don't want to be going around as a 21 year old talking like a 50 year old now. I mean, if you want, you can, but we would not recommend it because it just look weird and sound weird. And at this point, Matt realizes that there will be a lot of competing activities in terms of activities that you're required to do to gain fluency in your language every day. So he does give you a, a suggested schedule that you should follow, which I'll put on the screen right now. 
following this schedule or keeping this sort of schedule in mind will allow you to make sure that you touch on every single area required to improve your ability to speak and understand your target language. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm so glad that now it's all over in terms of theory. We've got the AJAT theory out of the way and the refold theory and method out of the way. Now we've put the theory out there and you guys understand it and the foundation of this channel. It's not that one method is better than the other, that the, both of them should be used in union. Now, going forward, I'll be giving you the tutorials and the, the next steps you have to do to get started in learning your target language. Over here on my channel is Japanese. I don't know why I'm saying target language. We're learning Japanese over here, so you better buckle up, man. But yeah, I'll see you next time. Ja, masane.